Hello to everyone, welcome back to a new session in our Women of the Bible. This is your pastor Yeti. Today it will be a part of the woman named Agar. I hope all is well with all of you and that we together can enjoy the information about that special woman. Her name is Egyptian, may mean fugitive or immigrant, and her character, her foreigner a foreigner and a slave. Hagar let pride overtake her when she became Abraham's wife. A lonely woman with few resources. She suffered harsh punishment for her mistake. She obeyed God's voice as soon as she heard it and was given a promise that her son would become the father of a great nation. And in her sorrow, that she was taken from her homeland to become a slave in a foreign land, where she was mistreated for many years. Her joy to know God, to know that God cared, that he saw her suffering and heard her cry, and that he helped her when she needed him most. And the key scriptures for this is Genesis 16. And chapter 21, verse 8 to 21. And Galatians chapter 4, 22 to 31. Now her story. An Egyptian slave and Sarah's bitter rival. Hagar still had one thing going for her that her mistress never enjoyed. A personal revelation of God, who lovingly intervened on her behalf not once but twice. It happened when she was alone and afraid without a shackle to her name. But that's getting ahead of the story. You may remember that Abraham, whom we honor as the father of faith, showed little evidence of that faith when he and Sarah first entered Egypt to escape a famine in Canaan. Certain the Egyptian would kill him once they caught sight of his beautiful wife. He advised her to pose as his sister. Soon enough, Pharaoh added Sarah to his harem and rewarded Abraham with an abundance of camels, sheep, cattle, donkeys, and servants. But God punished Pharaoh for his unwiting arrow so effectively that when he found out that Sarah was actually Abraham's wife, he ordered the two of them to leave Egypt with all their belongings. Possibly Hagar was part of the booty Abraham and Sarah took with them, a gift they later regretted. Still of the three parties involved in the scheme to make Agar a cigarette mother. She was perhaps the only innocent one, a slave with little power to resist. And when Sarah told Abraham to sleep with her maid, 
she opened the door to a spiritual catastrophe. As soon as Agar discovered her pregnancy, she began lording it over her mistress, and hardly a smart move for a young foreigner up against a woman entrenched in her husband's affections. In fact, Sarah made life so difficult for Agar that she fled into the desert, a desperate move for a pregnant woman who was so far from home. She hadn't gotten far before she heard the voice calling. Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? Go back to your mistress and submit to her. But then, as if to sweeten the order, came a word of assurance. You will have a son. You shall name him Ismael, for the Lord has heard of your misery. Remarkably, Hagar didn't argue, but returned to Abraham and Sarah. Like a stream of water in the desert, God's word had penetrated the wilderness of her heart. Her bondage, her bitterness, her anxiety about the future, God had seen every bit of it. He knew about the child in her womb, naming him Ismael, meaning God hears. In the years to come, whenever Agar would hold her son close, watch him play or worry about his future, she would remember that God was near, listening for the child's cry. Little wonder that she had responded to the voice in the desert by calling to the Lord, the God who sees me. Some 16 years later, Hagar found herself once again in the wilderness, this time by the force rather than by choice, in a crescendo of bitterness against her younger rival, Sarah had expelled Agar and Ismael from their home. Dying from thirst, Hagar placed her son under a bush and withdrew, unable to witness his agony. Her weeping was soon broken by an angel's voice. Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Lift the boy up. and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. And with that, the angel of the Lord opened Agar's eyes, so that she discovered a well of water nearby that would save her son's life. The last we see of Agar, she is living in the desert of Paran, in the Sinai Peninsula, busy securing a wife and therefore a future for Ismael. God had made a way in the wilderness for a single woman and her son without friends, family, or resources to help her. He had seen, he had heard, and he had indeed been faithful. Then her life and times in slavery Slavery was a common practice in ancient Near Eastern culture, so common that God's law made provision for its safe and fair practice, but not for its destruction. Slaves were obtained in any of a number of ways. Captives from war became slaves, particularly virgin women. Numeri 31, verse 7 to 32. Men and women and their children went into slavery to pay debts. Leviticus 25, verse 39. Slaves could be purchased. Leviticus 25, 44. And sometimes slavery was even voluntarily. As when a male slave who could have gone free remained in servitude in order to stay with the wife he loved. Exodus 21, 2 to 6. Hagar 
an Egyptian probably became a slave to Abraham and Sarah when they left Egypt. Genesis 12, verse 20. Leaving her homeland behind, she made herself useful and, prov and proved herself trustworthy, thereby becoming Sarah's maidservant, a position of some importance in the household. Sarah must have had some confidence and perhaps even affection for Agar to want her to be the surrogate mother of her son. Such practices were fairly common in that day. Infertile women urged their husband to take their maidservants in order to gain a child and heir for the family. Female slaves were often made to concubines or wives of the master or one of his sons. Their children became the property and sometimes the heirs of their masters. As female slaves, they had no choice in the matter. They were alone, with no rights and no one to defend them. Many women today are in a position similar to Agar's. They may not be actual slaves, but they are in positions of weakness, with no one to defend them. No one except God. The same God who defend Agar and heard the cries of her son in the desert, hears the cries of helpless women in their children today. When we are at our weakest, God is at his best, ready to step in and say to us, as he said to Agar, do not be afraid. Genesis 21, 17. The rest is for another day of this woman, Agar. May your day be blessed and a blessing that you may be also for others among you. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye-bye.